There's hope to believe that in the future, after most of the population has experienced this virus at least once before, it wouldn't be quite the same like what we're seeing now. We don't completely understand seasonality, but we do know some things. One is the weather, specifically cool versus warm temperature and humidity. Those things can be important. And another thing is human behavior. And how those things come into play depends on the specific virus, but we're talking about viruses that infect through the nose and throat. So for example, the flu, the influenza virus we all know of, that usually comes in the winter. There's a big peak that happens in the winter. When the air is drier, it's easier for the virus to transmit. And there's also a little bit of evidence that when the air is drier and also when there's cooler airway, air in the airway, that uh, reduces a little bit the defenses against the virus. So that's one aspect. And then the human behavior, the one that we can point to is rhinovirus, the common cold virus. So we know that the peak of that virus is after kids go back to school. So every year when kids go back to school, about two weeks later, you have the peak of that virus. So for that virus, human behavior seems to be a big part of it. And then, and then these cycles continue year after year in the similar patterns. For the 1918 pandemic, um, there are three waves, and some even say there are four waves over two to three years. So when the human are first exposed to it, you have a really high uh, susceptibility, and over time, you sort of build up that herd immunity. However, the virus could mutate as well. So, and this is especially the case for flu virus, which you can uh, mutate over time. So that's why we keep seeing seasonal influenza, even though we have a vaccine, uh, which are quite effective over time, we have to keep vaccinated from year to year. Looks like by April, you know, in theory, when it gets a little warmer, it miraculously goes away. I hope that's true. Other seasonal coronaviruses that cause colds, they're winter viruses, right? So that's, and they're also transmitted, at least the current information that we have now, it seems like they're transmitted in respiratory droplets, which is very similar to the influenza virus, the flu. And that does better with the dry air in terms of transmission. So for all those reasons, the reasons that think that the summer wouldn't be as favorable as the winter for the virus transmitting, but this is also that special situation where it's a brand new virus. So even if it's a little bit less, it still might be more than a usual virus because of that other problem that if we don't have pre-existing defenses. The initial spread of this virus around the world is gonna happen somehow, you know, in, in, until we have a vaccine. But, but once most people have been exposed and it comes back year after year, there's a possibility it would be a lot, you know, not quite as uh, serious a threat if it comes back again. We don't know 100% about that, but just based on what other viruses have done.